As always, it'll be a highly unprofessional podcast. It is the Clary Podcast. How you guys doing? For once, they use the intro the way God, or at least Shark Taws intended it. Maybe Shark Taws is God himself sent here by himself on the planet just to chill. They'll never suspect me being God. I'll come up. I'm going to pose. What are you going to do, JC and the Holy Spirit are talking to God? What are you going to do when you're down there? Okay, so here's my plan. I'm going to go down as a youngish 30-something black guy. Yeah, okay. Good start so far. And I'm going to come up with a YouTube channel. All right. Yeah, that's what the kids are doing down there nowadays. And then I'm going to create a channel that infuses jazz, funk, and soul kind of music, lounge, hip-hop, with documentaries on sharks. Like, they'll never suspect the thing. Never! This is the notes. These are the notes. You can see it's a very shitty professional thing. Oh, the oil change. Let's start with that. I'm going to use this to clean up the entire email thing. Now I'm going to get back on the horn with Hawaiian Airlines. Like, hey, it's been another 24 hours. My fifth time calling. I will be a Karen. I think I'm going to kick that up because the call center is in the Philippines, and I don't think they really do anything there. I'm like, yeah, I need to talk to a white guy. You need to talk to an American Yep. No, no, I don't. No, no, no. Let's talk, talk to someone who's up the chain. Let's go. <clears throat> it's a guitar of exchange in words, and they have no meaning and no efficacy in the real world. Well, I, I will. Hawaiian Airlines, mark my words. I'm going to cost you more than you charge me. I guarantee you I will. It, where You want to? I'm the one that took down American Family Insurance. You sure you want to fuck with me? I will cost you more than you could ever hope to make out of me with all the, well, I know that could be a lot of trans Pacific flights, but I guess the two or three more I might do in my lifetime round trip, I will cost you way more than any you could hope to get out of me my entire lifetime. Uh, I go look at the car. I'm like, eh. I don't do the number up on the dashboard or the windshield thing because I don't have my own little non-sticky stick thing to say, oh, when's the last time I changed the oil? I just eyeball the dirtiness of the oil. And the car I got out here at the Southern Command uh, was burning through about a quart. So I added some new oil. And you could tell, you could tell if you're a redneck. You could tell your low to lower middle income if your engine burns oil. But it's an advantage because you keep adding new oil, which postpones when you have to do the oil change. Like, well, the quality of the oil overall has improved. I'll get a couple extra hundred thousand miles, maybe a hundred to a thousand miles out of it. And so I added um, uh, the better part of a quart. I get out. That'll that'll last me the rest of this trip. And uh, and I looked at it and I'm like, nah, this is too dark, too dark. I was like, this is. I'm going to have to change it. And then we get the uh, the age old, is it worth my time kind of thing. A lot of philosophy involved in the oil change. A lot of male philosophy. You girls have no philosophy. <laughs> Somebody not me do it. Oil change. What's that? <laughs> I didn't know. Can I get another convertible cabriolet, daddy? Girls don't face any philosophical. No, I, I'm, I'm not even joking about it. There was the philosophy. It's just the, ah, we got some choices here, don't we? Yeah. Do I do it myself? You know, the argument of economics versus maintaining your masculinity. And it's not that masculine to change, change your oil. It's one of the lower level entry kind of, that's like kind of the minimum you can do. And then they will wait, but I, I got a lot of other things I could do. And will will I be forgiven by myself, mind you, not by society, not by God, not by Shartas, but by myself. Will I forgive myself if I do the economic thing and say, this is not worth my time. I could go make more money in the time it takes me to do the oil change. Uh, will, will I be forgiven? I'm not being a real man changing my own oil. Or will I be a real man, but then have to sacrifice the economics and say, oh, well, I'm going to be a real man, change my own oil. But <clears throat> if I had labored the hour and 15 minutes, I would have been ahead financially. And the answer was 
give it to me very quickly because there's an oil chain shop, Jiffy Lube, which, by the way, I'm for Jiffy Lube. I'm not not slamming on Jiffy Lube at all. Um, they've I've gone there many. I've been there many times. Uh, I've been there many times. And but there's the Jiffy Lube, and you hang a right, and then there's an O'Reilly's down the road. <laughs> I was about to go out and say, I, I decided to err on the side of economics. I'm like, eh, it's a nice day. Maybe I'll go for a hike. Even though I went for a hike yesterday. I'm going to go see what they're charging for the for an oil change now. And the GF, well, you know, the last time we went, because women fucking remember everything, which you girls think is a is a, a skill or a talent. It is a drawback. It isn't it. Do you remember when we went to the thing and you had the stuff? Fuck, are you talking? And then they get upset. You don't remember. Well, don't you remember? Did I fuck another woman? Did I did I hit you in the face? What? What happened at this day? We just had dinner. And I'm supposed to remember that out of all the other times we had dinner. But if like one in eight times their bear trap memory actually comes to service rather than just being annoying, paying in the ass. I, I she says. Well, we went to that that Jiffy Lube the other time. It was 60 bucks. I said, oh, you're right. And I'm like, okay. No wonder I did my oil change the last time. And so I was thinking, like, all right, we probably went on a weekend. Um, probably maybe short-staffed. It's the weekday. It's Monday afternoon, Monday morning. I'll go down to the Jiffy Lube and just get a price quote. And if it's too high, I'll just continue on to the O'Reilly's and get myself. Get myself. I'm not going to rely on the staff because the last time I relied on the staff, they gave me the wrong thing. And you got to ask, the, I'm not, I am not conducting commerce with anyone that doesn't have gray hair. <clears throat> you need to have gray hair for me to do commerce with you. I'm not, I'm not taking advice from anyone without gray hair. I'm not listening to anyone without gray hair. I look for the old man, the old man at the Homie Depot, at the Lowies, at the Jiffy Lube. And in this case, it was the old right. I want the old man with gray hair and fuck the rest of you. <clears throat> Got the old man with gray hair look. It's like a salute. None of you all see it because now you're like, oh my God. I'm going to pay somebody else to go and take my oil. I know. Oh, my God. The, the light bulb doesn't work. Can you come in, Mr. Landlord, and change my light bulb? I have a master's degree. Everyone salute from Harvard. Master's degree. <clears throat> so I go to the Jiffy Loop. I go past the homie depot, by the way, on the way to the Jiffy Loop. It's a magical Mr. Rogers neighborhood. And then I go and I, I turn in, not too bad, three bays, one car in each bay, one car outside each bay. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to wait forever. So I, I pull in, I, I park, where's the internet? <laughs> of course the internet goes no. Of course. <sighs> what, I, what I had the potential to do. What I had the potential to do. Hang on. Is the internet really now? It just says like it's low. Is it down? Ah, there it's, it's flashing it out. Always flashing out. Well, just wait. Let me know in that room. Oh, thank you, Blake. Thank you, Blake. <clears throat> <clears throat> Hang on.
Yeah, how's this? Can you guys hear me now? How's that? Just let me know if you can hear the audio. I guess we're just going to have to do audio because of Fox Communications. No audio, really? Better? Much better. Let's continue on. I don't know. Uh, Melis Messi, it's, it's, um, it's, it's not... The is Cox communication shit. Actually, I'm gonna. I have a new thing. We're gonna go to Cox communication. We're gonna go to Cox. I'm gonna go. I know where this is. I'm like, we're gonna change this. Well, I'm gonna come back here and um, make it cost you more than it cost me. Just a shit, absolute shit. Anyway, keep me updated if the it's cutting a bit still. <laughs> Oh, you're scratchy too, huh? Oh, wow. Look at this. Yep. Yep. DEI grads. Yep. It's that. It's it's not. I guarantee you guys, I mean, sure, I'm sure it contributes a little bit. When I worked in banking, all white dudes, all middle age, and it, it's just American incompetence. It's it's all. It's all. <clears throat> How's the audio now? And I did. Uh, Red Raven asked, have they been out to test it? No, 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 no. I, they have not been out to test it. Uh, just let me know if the audio is good and we'll continue on. <laughs> Choppy, but okay. Audio is still staticky. Audio is choppy. It says I got full connection now. It says I got full connection now. Okay, so far. <clears throat> All right, let's continue on. So I go to the... I park over at Jiffy Lube. And I try the first door. It's locked because that's always good business. So I go into the second door. Walk around. Cause I just want to know, what's it cost? What's it cost? Because you can't find it on the internet. You want to do something funny? You want to do something fun? Go on the internet. Go on the internet and search how much does an oil change cost? You could go to Valvoline or uh, Jiffy Lube, and all they did was hire a bunch of journalism majors to write fucking articles about what an oil change costs without mentioning what an oil change costs. I, it is the most fascinating thing. You know, it depends on the number of quarts of oil, and it depends on the synthetic. Dude, just give me a fucking price sheet. Give me a fucking price sheet. Let me know how much for a basic, refurbished, reused, regurgitated oil for a four-banger little engine. Let me know how much for the full synthetic, double-dodge, dick extender, Wyoming-eye penis truck. Just let me, give me a ballpark. You know, like every other under 30-something fuckwit, they write a fucking page and a half blog post about oil changes. What is an oil change? So I go in. And there's the guy. There's the guy with the gray hair I need. Now the internet gone again. <clears throat> now the internet's gone again. I look at him, and he looks at me, and we got the, the middle-aged man look like, yeah, this guy knows his shit. I said, what's an oil change go for nowadays? He's, what what kind of car? I said, four-cylinder engine, five five quarts of 5W20. He's like, $100. And he knew. You could see it in his eyes. He's just like, $100. <laughs> I'm like, an oil change goes for $100 now? And you could just see, you knew it wasn't him. You knew it was corporate. You knew it was supply. It, it didn't deter anybody. There's a, a significant line out there. <clears throat> and I was like, 100 days. Like, yeah. I said, okay. But you know, we got like, no, no, you don't have to. You don't have to say anymore. I'll just go home and do it myself. I was like, yeah, we'll see ya. I go down to O'Reilly's. I go get, what, five quarts of oil. The cheap stuff for 23, 24 bucks, 25 with tax. Six dollar <throat> filter, 20 minutes of my time. It's done. It's done. And no offense to the, the grease monkeys out there. At least I know it's done. 
couple times you like i've heard horror stories there's no oil yep you're good to go engine light goes on <clears throat> uh, okay that was a no-brainer that was a no-brainer for me and i i that's 60 bucks to 100 that is 66 percent inflation at this one particular jiffy lube place i was like holy cow a hundred dollars for an oil change well honestly the the shit i predicted in a book i didn't write more not even a year ago six months ago and a, a world without men and all an analysis of an all-female economy honestly girls what are you going to do it was one thing when men were motivated by the you know the prospect not the promise the prospect of sex and family and children and uh you know maybe maybe a wife it, it, implying there be love we all know how that goes with divorce rates and everything now we got the internet we we're no longer uncouth we're we are no longer unhip to the jive and so the guys you're not going to have armies of men sign up to be grease monkeys they had they had now hiring at jiffy lube my god what are they paying now if you're charging a hundred dollars uh an oil change like on the cheap end i'd imagine now we're approaching living i ask unto you girls you're not shit. Look, you girls aren't changing your own oil. You just aren't. I'm sure there's a phenomenally rare and exceptional girl that is. But what this shit, this infrastructural shit, and I don't mean the sewer system. I don't mean the nuclear power plants or the electric grid. Certainly that on a macro view. But the infrastructural shit at home, you girls are going to pay whatever modicum and i do mean modicum whatever fractional boost in income you got from your worthless college degree there's a little bit over a high school diploma that whatever modicum of an increased salary you're going to get from that is going to be taken away from guys that are doing your plumbing doing the oil changes uh i had to install i didn't have to i didn't have to um the, the guy who owns the Southern Command, he says, hey, can you install a new, uh, <clears throat> it's not food, fo food disposal grinding unit. I've never used though. I'm like, that is a waste of time. You don't need that. You don't need that. And so I, it's not my house. I installed it anyway. What are, what are the girls going to, what are you girls going to do without the, just basic guys? I said about it in the book. A world without men, even with the guys you have now. Why do you think Jiffy Loop can't find people? Because they can't find even. I'm not. You don't have to be a genius to change oil, but you got to have a little bit of competency. They can't even find these guys. It's not that men all of a sudden became dumb and incompetent over the past 15 years. They just became completely demoralized. You're not finding enough men to change it. You girls are gonna. And oh my God, by golly, can we do a prediction? Well endowed, Molly. Girls are going to go in New York. They're going to go try and get their oil changed. Hell, some guys are going to go and try and get their oil changed. You say, how much? $100 and you don't have the money or it really is going to put a crimp into your budget. <clears throat> and then you're going to go try and find some friend. Well, one, good luck finding a friend who knows how to do it. But two, if you do find a friend, what do you think? They're going to charge you? Or they're not going to charge you? They're going to charge you somehow. They're going to charge you somehow. And then we're all, oh, then the, I wonder what women could pay for. I wonder how women could pay. And we're going to face that uncomfortable conversation. And they say, well, I'll do it for 80. I, th I think men are going to charge. None of you guys are too. Well, we could come to an agreement. Ah, what the hell do you think marriage was? What did you think that was? <clears throat> I don't know. You really, thank God. And you boys out there, and any girls who are smart enough to listen, learn some basic skills, get some tools, some carpentry tools and car tools. I even have a list in Bachelor Pad Economics. That's how much foresight there was. That thing is 11 years old now. That book is, a, oh, wait, no. Yeah, 2013, I think. Yeah, 2013. It's 11 years old now. I go through all of the, like, the tools you need. And man, just to know how to change oil is going to make you more, more money than most of your college degrees. I was like, holy cow, $100 for an oil change. $100? Bucks. I, I got another question. What's it going to be next year?
Really? What's it going to be next year? I... <laughs> It it was even worth my time. I make roughly $100, $150 an hour in asshole consulting or doing YouTube stuff, right? I can't just do it all the time. I have to have stuff that's interesting to talk about. I, hey, it's the Aaron whipping his dick around show. <clears throat> no one's going to tune into that. But it actually paid me to go, hey, no, I'm doing it myself. Went underneath, pulled the car up on the curb. Real, real ghetto oil change. You guys, a roadside repair. Just pop that car up on the curb. I'm a skinny fucker. I can foot underneath. Got my sack arranged. Which was this? Which was this? Is it? Ah, oh, that's nice and snug. This is it. Grab the hammer. Grab the sack wrench handling. Tap, tap, tap. Break the initial oil plug. Open it up. <clears throat> Unscrew it. Oh, and I didn't even wait. I didn't even wait for the oil to get cool. I'm like, I'll just put on some gloves. I don't have time. And a, a real good oil change, I might add. You know, it's a real good oil change when not a drop of oil hits the ground. I had my oil pan. I bought a large one open, not, not one with the top. <clears throat> I got a large open oil pan. Um, I put down a carpet underneath. And uh, didn't even, not even one drop on the road. Not even one drop on the road. That's how much you care about the environment. Brand new fresh oil, put on a new hand tightened. Yes, I did put oil around the O-ring. Hand tightened it. Oh, it was good. And then then Cappy drove around. And I saved myself $70. $70 in 20 minutes. What is it? Times three. That's $210 an hour. Oh, I'm sure out in the Henderson, I'm sure it's probably more you could find cheaper, you go elsewhere, but I don't know. I I'm kind of curious where it is in your neighborhood. The gas is pretty pricey out here, too. Pretty pricey. All right, let's go to the Super Chats before the uh, <clears throat> internet loses it even more. A deeply closeted gay man, two bucks. <sighs> you like that? You like that? I know how to email him back. I can't email him because he gave me the wrong email. So I can't email him and say, hey, dipshit, you gave me the wrong email. Can you send me your, your good email? Oh, my God, the word of God. Duh. The Lord. Duh. My proper title is the real king shark, but I'll take God as well. I'll piss on a few of you Christians. I'll piss off a few Christians for you. Uh, you could go ahead. I don't. I don't care to piss off the Christians. <clears throat> don't, I care to piss off the fake Christians. That's like ninety-eight percent of them, but not the real ones. JJ Sedton, five bucks. What is this? White girl blood and oil change takes tops one hour if you have the right gear. Don't go to a store. They always over torque the lug nut. Yeah, that's another thing. I remember the, um, you had to do the, what's it called? The screwdriver through the oil filter because they put it on way too tight or they didn't bother to put any uh, oil on the O-ring. <clears throat> I know, I know, JJ, I did it myself. I did it myself. It didn't take that long. It took about 20 minutes. Uh, just one of those like, oh, I'll trap it by and then and you say, ah, maybe do I want to at home go out to eat i'll go out to eat. you're right it's the same thing with restaurants increasingly it's not worth it it's good it takes longer sitting waiting especially in the philippines where it takes 45 minutes so for a sandwich you don't understand baby. you got to sick you sit there and go tortoise six speed because it doesn't mean american or superior it's just fair that's funny because i would imagine faster is superior. Well, like making a good um, stew or you're, you're soaking something in the crock pot, then slower is better. Sex is better. So there's a, ha oh, great. there's a handful of things that slower is superior, but generally faster is superior. It's culturally relative. Shut the fuck up. Under 55, five bucks. That 100 would have been better getting Starlink. Yeah, uh, I think it is Starlink. I think it is. I'm, I'm gonna look at you. You're right, guys. You're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, X runner, five bucks. Speak of journalism majors, dead. Oh, is Deadspin? Hang on, Deadspin. They are owned by the same company that owns Otaku. Deadspin shut down. <clears throat> Sports East by Dead Spin. 
will lay off its entire staff after sold to a European holding firm, parent company, who paid for Deadspin. Geo Media, that used to be Gizmodo. They also own Kotaku. Kotaku, you're about to, you're about to, oh, oh no. Let's read through it. The Hill. <clears throat> 404, then you can't find it. All right, I guess we won't go to the Hill. Don't want to go to the New York Times. Let's go to the New York Post. I trust them over the New York Times. And I don't even trust the New York Post that much. Uh, oh, good Lord. God almighty. You can't even. Before I go, no New York Post. No, no New York Post. You had too much bubbly, bubbly pop-up stuff. Let's try variety. <clears throat> is variety going to raise in my eyes? Deadspin's entire staff laid off as Go Media sells sports news sites to European startup. Startup. No, I don't want the videos playing. Sports news and commentary. Deadspin has been. <sighs> And then it just popped up that I had a virus. Okay. All right, Variety. All right. I'm done. I'm done. I, I, I wonder why the news sites are going down. I wonder why. God. Dead spin shut down. Let me try the New York Times. Maybe they won't raise in my eyes. Deadspin sells the European company leaving staff behind. New owner lineup publishing will not be bringing on any of the sports websites existing staff members. <laughs> Fuck you, journos. You worthless American journos. <clears throat> Katie Robertson. Deadspin, the sports news website, has been sold to a European digital media company. Its owner, Geo Media, said on Monday... Go Media, which is owned by private equity firm Great Hill Partners, operates a number of digital media brands, including Gizmodo, Kotaku, and The Onion. Jim Spanfeller, the chief operating executive, told staff members on the email Monday afternoon the company has re recently been approached about a deal by a newly formed digital media company called Lineup Publishing. Accepted the offer because the buyer's editorial plans for the brand, tough competition in the sports journalism sector, and valuation that reflected a sizable premium for our original purchase price of the site. He did not disclose the deal price. Uh, <clears throat> and none of you are going with them. None of you are going to have jobs. I hope you learn to code. One of the news editor people at Kotaku, um, some gal, uh, she blocked me on Twitter because I asked her, I said, are you going to learn to code? Because she couldn't handle criticism. It wasn't even criticism. I was just concerned about her career and her but look how that uh, news editor, you know, big time journal. No, you're just a bunch of fucking whores. You're worthless little basement dwelling whores who have no skills and no job. And now the world knows it. Bye bye, journos. Bye bye. Don't worry. As citizens, got we got our journalism. We, we can take care of our own journalism. Thank you very much. Drew, two bucks. Girl I know is a wealth manager, $100,000 in student loan debt. Yep. <clears throat> yep. That's pretty much all financial people, finance people and realtors. They don't know shit. Bankers, investment bankers. Most of, I know you girls, ooh, shiny bobble. He's sexy. No, he isn't. He's insolvent. Know the difference between insolvent and bankrupt, ladies. You'll thank me later. Drew, two bucks. I go to Grease Monkey with no issues. I have been to a Grease Monkey, uh, the one in Denver. I'm sure they got more than one in Denver, but it was one in Denver. And they were fun. I have no problem with the, with no problem with you. Valvoline, Grease Monkey, Jiffy Lube. I was just wow. And and God bless them if they can get it. Look, Becky has her master's degree with a hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt, being a wealth manager. Uh, yeah, stab them. Take all the money. Take all their money. Absolutely. Take their money. Make them pay. They're strong and independent and don't need no man, except they got to pay a man $100 to change their oil. Think about that. That's, that's some good profit margins. A hundred. What's an oil change take? They got it down in under 15 minutes, right? So four oil changes an hour, uh, three bays. Let's do the math on that. Three bays. Times 
four oil changes an hour. That's 12 oil changes per hour times 100. Okay, that's $1,200 an hour. Did I do that right? $1,200 an hour? Four times three, 12 times 100, yeah. Times, uh, let's say, uh, 320 days a year. 384,000, that doesn't seem right. I don't know how you, well, maybe you could run it off of that. <clears throat> maybe somebody in the oil change industry will tell me better. Drew, two bucks, three hundred dollars for a ski lift ticket here is normal. Yeah, I, I I don't like skiing that much. Drew, five bucks. I wonder, you know what? I wonder what they would charge for reliable internet. I wonder how many of the sports cars and SUVs are fully paid off in the parking lot when I went skiing this weekend. It's insane, and I'm driving an 03 Jeep. Yeah, I drive a piece of shit car. I mean, pretty much wherever I go. And um, especially when you go to Anthem, Atham, look it up. Not Atham, look Anthem, Atham up. Atham, look Anthem up. <clears throat> they all drive uh, uh, Teslas there. And I, I know there's wealth out in Anthem, but there's not that much wealth. I know at least half of it's fake. But you can't you can't live out there without a, without a Tesla. At least they don't have oil changes. I'll grant you that. They don't have oil changes. Red Raven, two bucks. Test, hardline modern modem to cpu if okay it's it is router i <clears throat> i guarantee you it is cox because cox gave me the router it is cox communication non-stop dre 360 two bucks come to south korea cappy internet is phenomenal i might i might it it's it's i'm looking to improve not not decrease i'm looking for thin people and good internet and Hotels and Priceline that doesn't lie. That's pretty much what I'm looking for. Learned a lot about myself traveling overseas. Matt Baker, 87, 5 Canadian bucks. I save 300 a year by changing my tires and can change my brakes and oil. Maybe you use $150 an hour for better internet. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Matt. I'm, I'm going to go over. I have really nothing else to do today. And I am going to go to press communication. Like, all right, what is the deal? All right, you're going to fix it. What I mean, it's just now hear me out. I would never do this, but what if I just took a baseball bat and started breaking all the windows and there because this is what I want to do, but I won't do it because I'll go to jail for assault. Or, I mean, I, I guess I'd have to assault the person. Destruction of property. <clears throat> oh no, I'm not here to steal anything. I'm just here to fuck shit up and just 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 destroy it and then I make the news. Crazy right-wing podcaster shuts down local Cox communication store for a week. Leaves no no screen untouched. I say, y'all might as well go home tonight. Go home now. Got the rest of the day off because I'm going to make it that this place is shut down. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Ross the Skunk, $20. My Truth, The King, five bucks. Sex in the City was the best show of the best journal and you NYC article writer ever. America thanks Carrie for her service to future generations. Is that what she was? Was she a, was she an author? And that's why all the gals ended up becoming authors of my generated journalists and they go to New York City because that's where all the action is. So a great one and I, when I used to visit him in Fort Collins, we'd go through all these old articles he had and some were 10 years old. <clears throat> and they were the old publication of the University of Colorado, Fort Collins College newspaper. And so, you know, sometimes they were five to 10 years old. And we'd look at the person who wrote it, you know, they're a dipshit sophomore thinking they knew everything. Oh, by the way, every article was why we need more of other people's money. Because all you fucking college graduates and college students can't fucking think of another fucking different idea. Like, get off your fat fucking ass and work. <clears throat> so we go and we look these people up. Oh, my God. They're all fucking losers. Just, uh, like, nonprofits or, you know, jump from one uh, one newspaper to the other newspaper to the other only to get keep laying off or da -da -da, not making enough money. Just, guys, you could go learn to code. You could actually be a productive member of society. Uh, nonstop Dre, 362 bucks. South Korea has good hiking spots, quiet and thin people. All right, maybe I am going to go to South Korea. Handicappy, two bucks. Cox is advertising on your Instagram account. <clears throat> well, soon we'll, I'll make sure to, look, 
They have such a horrible product. Obviously, you guys have seen it. You now know, they're they're their own worst enemy. They'll find out you don't need me to go do a video. Cox come, communication sucks. Everyone here knows it. Drew Tupac Scientology has commercials now. Oh, okay, what's wrong with that? That's fine. There's nothing wrong with having commercials for religion. A little more honest. Nonstop trade two bucks. I saw Carlson and Cox add up on this video. <laughs> the Carlson School of Management, which should have never, never done that to me. Oh, you know what? Let's do this. Let me go through some <clears throat> emails that I got on Asshole Consulting to kind of clean that up. Some fan, some critique. Um, I'm going to delete Seton's email. Uh, where is it? Here we go. <clears throat> this is from a client, aspiring client. Hi, Aaron. My name is William. I'm coming here to request a consultation. I'm a 28-year-old male who is getting his bachelor's in sociology after getting a degree in African-American studies to become more educated. I have a 98 IQ. I'm 250 pounds and 5 foot 7. I live with my parents as of right now and work at Walmart while doing my college studies. I eventually want to work at HR for a corporation and hope to make a six-figure salary. I went to college to follow my passion to success. I spent my Walmart salary to Lisa Mercedes Ben out so I could pick up some chicks. I managed to get a few matches after posing as a rich dude online, but even after they saw my Mercedes, they saw me and they rejected me probably because I haven't lost weight or tried to do anything meaningful about it. I'm with the plus size movement. I believe they should have, they should have been more accepting of me. I spent about five hours a day moderating a Reddit server. Should I stop doing that and get a second job? Anyways, my loans are piling up and I don't know what to do. Also, I don't know which email <laughs> to send this to. <clears throat> do I send this to the Cappy email account? I'm just going to hit send. <laughs> What's funny is that obviously the guy's lightheartedly and knowingly trolling. But, and we, we make fun of the people here. You do understand that that's like the average person, right? This the average person in the United States right now. The fact that they, this is not too far off from the average person in the United States. <clears throat> Thanks for the email. I found that. That was good. That was good. Uh, there's that. Let me read through this. Well, this is long. This isn't urgent. It's just a networking troubleshooting guide. I know you have some familiarity with networking, of course. I'm here to di diagnose the issue properly, <clears throat> so I apologize sincerely. I once had Cox Communication having similar connectivity issues. All right, this is Jermaine. While well, they suggested that I would not be getting service if they, at all if they were using the incorrect MAC address, it turned out that they did, in fact, have the incorrect MAC address on file. I provided them with the correct MAC address for my modem and asked them to reprovision my modem. My issues were resolved. All right, <clears throat> I'm going to do that. I'll have to look up how do you find a MAC. Isn't it as wonderful what Cox Communication makes you does? You now have to look up what your MAC address is on the modem. Uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> this is from, oh, Boo Boo. He just uh, sent me that. Thank you, Boo Boo. Uh, that was... That um, here's someone I'm gonna help down. Uh, it says this is Brandon Schlamp. It's his email. You are a traitor to America and the West. Go fuck yourself. Okay, Brandon. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, oh, I don't have that many. I don't have that many. Hang on, Jake. Stop sending me so much email. Reen, sorry, Reen. I mean, I got, I only have so much time in the day, man. <clears throat> uh, he is referencing someone he heard at a party saying her and her dog had bought a condo together. I know there's crazy women that marry themselves and their dogs, but how common is this going to be going forward? But my name of the girl, as it looks, the guys may have picked. If you had a AI, you're basically talking algorithm. 
and uh, I don't know, she has a gator girl who, you know, her dog is her life. I do not mean he bought a higher condo. I mean, the AI is this not for you. No risk in talking to AI. And I'm with you, man. Like, I, yeah, I don't think AI is real. AI isn't real. If I have to choose a thing that doesn't exist to hurt me, and a thing that does exist but will hurt me, I'm going to take a thing that doesn't exist and doesn't hurt me. <clears throat> always make the there's all exception. There are good women. It's increasingly rare that is increased women that you have. Uh, a girl believes that her is like her life partner. Um, that's not necessarily jail or how in a situation. That's just girl. And the damage you're going to incur is going to be slightly psychological. There'll be a slight psychological damage you can take talking to a delusional girl like this. But it's still a price. And that price can run from slight psychological pain to losing that shit, getting shot, stabbing, like the, the other extreme, getting killed, essentially. But I think mostly everything in between. Um, <clears throat> the... Ladies, you're there's a risk, but then there's also a reward. The risk is variable. Interacting with women is increasingly risky, but I wouldn't say, you know, oh, prohibitively risky. I wouldn't say that. <clears throat> but there is no reward. There is increasingly no reward. Like, really, what do you bring to the table? And this fucking bullshit, I am the tape. Knock that shit off. This is a serious quote. What do you bring? And this just brings, this is a headache. This is a headache. <clears throat> Reen again. Reen wanted some commentary on the TikTok trends. I don't know how much, but had a buddy. Apparently, he got the ketchup challenge from his wife. What's the ketchup challenge? Obviously, I had to ask. Apparently, she spills ketchup on purpose, then asked the guy to clean it up. Well, my buddy said, no, you spilled it. And apparently, this actually ended up in an argument. There, okay, again, why, why, this guy's married. Now he, there's now a huge risk involved, financial risk at least, obviously is significant, more than just being annoyed with a girl on a first date talking stupidly about her dog. Now you have to give up your wife. <clears throat> he does, he has to give up his wife. He has to divorce her. This is petulant and childish behavior. This is not acceptable. Like, yeah, this is just what guys want is to be tested all the time. You're married. There should be no tests. But you don't understand, Aaron. That's just female nature. Well, too fucking bad. I guess men aren't dealing with it anymore. Was it always like this? I It was not always like this. There was a time when we were doting and supporting. Like, man, you better support your man, your household. Oh, my God. Yeah, find yourself a man and support him. And you better feed him and keep him a help. No, now it's just a fucking game. Like, the, look, look at the absurdity. You have married women testing their husbands. This would be just as absurd with men doing the ketchup game or the ketchup test. <clears throat> uh, now there's a test of calling your boyfriend your husband. I got to know why do this, what this needs to self-sabotage. Obviously, I've mentioned before, not exactly well-versed in women, but that's because I don't put up with that. I'm not a 20% either. Anyway, no, you had some videos on women's cumulative behavior, but why does it skew in such negativity? Um, I'll give you a shot in the dark here why that is, Reen. It, don't view it as negativity or positivity. Look at it in terms of profitability, uh, economic profit, whether <clears throat> getting what you want out of a counterparty, whether that's money, maybe in this case, attention, or, or uh, I don't know, feels. Uh, drama, some kind of endorphin hit. Uh, the reason it skews negative or costly is because they are acting as a cartel. And a cartel, whether it's OPEC or a drug cartel or any other kind of cartel, <clears throat> diamond cartel, is you form an alliance with all the other suppliers in the market to limit the supply 
so you could extract a higher price. That's what this is. And girls would get together in a very hive-like mind away. They, they're kind of all on the same page. It's the sisterhood. It's unconscious, and I would also say conscious. It's subconscious and conscious. It's uh, an active decision they make. It is also instinct. They It's, it's uh, tribalism at a certain extent. But here, <clears throat> they do it because they can get more out of men this way. They get whatever, more attention. They have to put in less effort. I... That's that's why that's that's the economic reason I'd say is if you all cumulatively stop giving as much to men or whatever group, you stop selling diamond solo, you stop supplying the market with with oil, you can charge more of a price, whether that's attention, drama, money, commitment, whatever, you could extract more of a price. I I think it's very short term gain. <clears throat> It's very short-sighted because men then watch this ridiculousness on the internet and say, fuck this, I'm not doing it. And by the way, ladies, for those of you who are listening, this whole idea that men have to bow down and do what you want in order to get laid or, oh, you know, you have to defer to, like, deference is what it is. Not necessarily worship, but that, oh, you can't make a woman unhappy. You can, No, no, the that old school thinking is done now. Uh, young men are realizing that you can be insulted, you can be offended. It's perfectly all right if you cry. It's not a it's not a crisis. It doesn't have to be solved. And we don't owe you jack fuck all shit. Hey, you're you're getting exactly what you wanted. You want to be treated independently, and now you want to be treated as equal. If men did this shit to their friends, playing these little fucking psycho games, doing these little tests, they stop hanging out with each other. They stop countering and they stop counter investing. So I go ahead. Oh, the ketchup game. Good for you. <laughs> Refer to your friend, your boyfriends as husbands. See what happens. Ha 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 ha. Just like this, this channel will immediately go online and we'll point it out. All the men will be updated in relatively short order, like a week or two. And say, oh, look at them. <clears throat> Women acting, frankly, stupidly and immaturely. And it's just going to make the relationship between men and women worse. You girls could knock it the fuck off. You could June Cleaver up and be nice and sweet and kind or or just honest and direct and mature. But you want to play these middle school girl games in your 30s and 40s? Have fun with that shit. <clears throat> um, there is one viral video where a girl set up her husband's PlayStation game night her man's PlayStation game night because he'd been working late and a game he wanted was coming out that night. His girl went and got gaming food and did a little fun and did a fun little thing where she made a menu of certain items cost certain interactions like a hug or a kiss. Now I'm coming up pretty naive right now, but doesn't that sound like more fun content to make? Yeah. Oh yeah. No, that's a sweet girl. Like I said, there are good girls out there. That is sweet. It's a wonderful thing. Like I remember a, a girlfriend I had gave me a coupon book. You know, free blowjob. Everything was free. <clears throat> They're like 100% off coupons. I didn't appreciate it at the time. I, didn't, I had no idea women would play these fuck. I just thought, well, that's what girls do is nice things. I, it shows you how naive you are when you come out of the gate. Well, girls, if they're my girlfriend or wife, they'll do nice things for me. Doesn't it make sense? Oh, stupid man. Said he is her. Or apparently there's also one about peeling an orange. Just shoot. Yeah, the peeling the orange. <clears throat> Look, if, if you girl, I've, I've talked about this. What you see on the internet does not 100% reflect America, but uh, uh, the dating situation between men and women does not 100% reflect all women's behaviors, but it informs men's be, uh, view of women. You girls want to keep playing these games. Go ahead. You, you want to keep doing it. <clears throat> Let's go. Uh, yeah, Jake, uh, someone told me, multiple people told me the Lotus Eaters referenced the book of numbers. They had uh, the charts and the data up there uh, because they were referencing pearly things. And Pearl was talking about my book. But the chart they used was um, <clears throat> wrong. The only reason I had that chart in my book was like, well, here's what the numbers look like. But we now have to factor in cross-correlation or co covariation between those variables. And um, I I just wish people would 
would uh, <laughs> have a little bit of intellectual honesty, like even on our team, because the Lotus Eaters are on our team. I agree with them mostly. You know, I mean, we, I don't disagree with them all the time. But like, look, could you could you just contact me and say, hey, what's with these stats? Do you have like the uh, yeah? Here's what it is, and here's the numbers. Thanks. Hey, <clears throat> uh, here, Seton emailed Seton. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, thanks, Seton. I'll get back to your email. Uh, I'm going to delete that one. And I'm going to delete that one. <laughs> going to delete that one. Uh, what? Why the hell am I getting this? Why am I getting this? Journal research. Unsubscribe. Unsubscribe from all stories. <clears throat> I'm only slightly joking. What I may do... Um, like when I find out I have uh, a terminally ill disease, I, I'm only slightly joking. I think I'm going to go into my spam mail and find all these people and say hi. Just say hi. Just visit. You know, hey, how you doing? And then the FBI and the police be like, why is he visiting all these people? Who is visiting all these people? What happened to him? I don't know where they went. Why is that patch of grass growing so well over there in that ditch? <clears throat> and I would never actually do that. I would never actually do that. But there's a piece of me that would love nothing more than to just like find all these people that fill my my email and just like find them. Like, hey, how you doing? Ah, yeah, I got your IP address. Yeah. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna donate fifty thousand dollars to the Innocence Projects or St. Jude's Children's Research Center. You're never gonna be able to work spamming people ever again i see you got your diploma from hustlers university there yeah you'll never be able to view that again unless you make a donation right now oh that's awfully kind of you look you made a donation to the innocence project thank you your your money is very well donated yeah you should find a new line of work i think <clears throat> shark toss send an email in all right, so there's that. Uh, let's go through the super chats a little bit more. Stay on top of these. Drew, two bucks. Guy I know worth 500 mil drives a Camry. Yep. I know y'all give um, <clears throat> Fit, Myron over at Fresh and Fit a little bit of guff, but uh, he's true minimalist. The, the guy saves and invests his money. He doesn't have fancy shit. JJ Sedton, two bucks. Cappy, some guys will pay money to put you on damn trolls. No, no, I get it. <clears throat> okay, look, you trust me on this, JJ. I know when a troll is trying to troll me. And I'll, if, if they think they're actually trying to get one past me, uh, what I'll do is I'll charge 120 bucks, and a lot of times they'll pay. And that's fine. If they want to pay me, it's, it's my same time. I don't care. That guy, that was a little bit of a work of art. That one was, he hit all the tropes, all the stereotypes. He knew that I would know it was a troll job. He wasn't trying to hoodwink me. But yeah, if, look, if you all want to write in Dear Penthouse Forum requests or an e-gene, you know, complete fabricated bullshit, as long as you're willing to pay, sure, oh, that's fine. <clears throat> you know, money is money, time is time. Two bucks, Drake. Cappy is still promoting guys chopping <laughs> There was a little bit of a vasectomy. Oh, EV Magazine, which is not a real thing. Uh, it's a bunch of truly neutral women who want to write a women's magazine. And something about a vasectomy. And then, oh my God, vasectomies are so bad. And I said, I 100% endorse vasectomies in the Twitter gram. And then all the Spurgs came out. You're a eunuch? You cut your dick off? It's like, no, that's, that's not what it is. But that's all right. I have a book about vasectomies coming out whenever I feel like it. Justified misogyny, two bucks. Boomer still gatekeeping tax jobs still applying. 
where uh where you play you know justified i would contact chad <clears throat> see what he recommends i know he's busy um it could be your area i i less so as time in the internet has kind of standardized and commodified american culture i believe less so in geographic variables but th- it's still a factor sometimes like if if the local um <clears throat> the local what's it called the local factory went out of business in your town and everyone's laid off and everyone's looking for a job that could be a local thing if you're in Wyoming and and people only have like 3 of the what is it 26 chromosomes they need that's obviously a cultural issue uh if you're in California and you're too busy having anal sex with your gay bum boyfriend while you take a shit in somebody's face and you vote democrat while jerking off somebody with a plastic dildo strap on, you know, like Californians do. Um, you, obviously, you're going to have a little bit of trouble finding a job there. But there, <clears throat> there's cultural things. Or you're just your typical white person in Seattle, and you look at yourself in the mirror all day with no sun, thinking of ways that you hate yourself even more than the Portlanders do. I know there's different cultures in America. There's different geographical things going on. <laughs> Oh, Drew two bucks. How many cars do you own and what's your favorite? <clears throat> I have, if we include the truck, probably my truck. I own one, two, three, four. I have four vehicles and and then I'm, and two motorcycles. One down here, one up there. So those are all, and they're all shit cars. They're all shit cars. Diecaster, two bucks. Get Calix Internet Hotspot Unlimited Data. 750 a year. Hang on. 750 divided by 12. What is that? <clears throat> 62 bucks a month. That ain't bad. Calix, let me write this down. Let me write this down. Thank you, by the way. To-do list. Uh, yeah, this is my to-do list. Calix Internet. All right. <clears throat> I may go for a hike. I went for a pretty serious hike yes- yesterday. I might go for another hike today. It's just meditative. It just is. Oh, thanks, Dicastinator. Uh, Dre, two bucks. Philippines are secretly ruining Cappy's internet. No, it is not the Philippine people. The Philippine, by the way, if you're looking to retire and you don't want to work and you don't need the internet, check out the Philippines. Land in Manila, get the fuck out, go to Cebu, go to any other place. <clears throat> but if you need to work, <laughs> if you expect your hotels to be reserved, you might have to go. And if you go to the Philippines or anywhere, go through a travel agency to make sure that they get the right hotel. That's that's what I would do. Red Raven, two bucks. You think Cox gives you good equipment? Answer equals no. Yeah, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna take my phone. I'm like, here, why don't you hear? Listen to my headphones. I want you to listen to this. All right, that's you guys. So what are you going to do to fix this before I come back here and start destroying your equipment? What the fuck is that noise? Oh, I know what that is. All right, never mind. Uh, Drew, two bucks. DEI is pretty bad at my work. I'm looking to leave. Yeah, leave. Look, all these, look, if you keep hiring people based on the color of their skin and not the content of character, you're going to have dysfunctional, fucked up. You're going to have Hollywood. Look, guys, I know you don't like what Disney's doing, but this is what happens when you're a racist, sexist, otherwise bigoted fuck. And you, and and nepotistic. I guarantee you all these girls are hiring their BFFs and putting, oh, my God, Kathleen Kennedy. Oh, my God. It, it show, you're going to lose money. Right? So just leave. Absolutely. I, I'd love, I would love to see how well American companies do when all the white guys leave. You go ahead. That's fine. <laughs> you don't need us. All right. Bye. Just just go ahead. I Really. And then even if, Drew, I don't know if you're black, white, Hispanic, whatever. I'm assuming you're a guy. If you're just a competent man and they're going to promote vagina over you even if you might be hispanic or minority whatever bye it doesn't matter male female whatever it is if they're not meritocratic it just means somebody else is gonna it you might get promoted but you are still gonna be limited 
at the end of your um, at the end of the day, especially when it starts mattering. Because if all of a sudden you're like 45, 50, and that's when you start making it like, oh, okay, here's where the real money comes in. Oh, yeah, we know, Drew, you happen to be a Hispanic gay man, and you're 100% legit about it, let's just say. Oh, but Ladasha, she's female. Oh, and she's lesbian. Fuck you, Drew. We don't care you got 25 years experience. Like, nope, nope, she gets pro – what do you mean our product sucks? <laughs> what do you mean the – what do you mean the bridges are collapsing? What do you mean lawsuits? Um, <clears throat> there was, let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. AF, no. Somebody sent me an article that IBM was laying off a bunch of people. And they are. And the way it was quoted on the Twitter grams was that HR and DEI was getting uh, the majority revealed, <clears throat> uh, we're getting the majority of layoffs. So I found the original article and that was not it, but I did find an article, um, <clears throat> adjacent to it where I know you guys would love it. Let's just, natural ebb and flows of the business cycle, natural ebbs and flows of business is, uh, Companies lay off people. Products become obsolete or no longer profitable. They always want to trim down. There's an acquisition. They don't need double the amount of mid-level managers. That's just the natural fact of business is they cut <clears throat> they cut the fat. They, they got to remain. And you may not like that, but you, you know if they don't do that, you're, the cost of your goods and services are going to be a lot higher. And so you want companies to be efficient and lean. And I know... When, when these layoffs happen, which tend to be just a normal course of action, you desperately want it to be diversity and inclusion. You want it to be like Elon, Elon Musk, where he went into Twitter and just fired all the worthless freaking quanta ha -has. Yes, <clears throat> that in that case, he did fire a bunch of worthless leftist activist welfare jobs, charity jobs type of people. But that's the exception, not the rule. However, here's a, a pretty well-written article that indicates your – Whereas the IBM thing is not true, they're not disproportionately laying off HR and diversity and inclusion. Here's some that's more realistic. <clears throat> Layoffs reveal DEI policies at top tech companies may not be what you think. Layoffs have recently become common in the tech industry, topping the list of companies making cuts or hyperscalers such as Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, all announcing thousands of job cuts within weeks of each other, followed by IBM, Dell, and SAP. With simultaneous investments in AI, some companies point fingers at automation as the reason to cut tech jobs, but research indicates most of the layoffs are centered around HR, recruitment, and diversity and equity inclusion. The firing frenzy, you know, here we just have to be honest, the firing frenzy not opens the door for cyber attackers. It threatens key efforts in DEI and recruiting practices, <clears throat> just as the talent shortage reached a 16-year high in 2022, according to Manpower Group. DEI becoming a widely adopted program of enterprises was catalyzed by the racial reckonings of 2020, with initiatives jumping from 29% 29, 29 in 2019 to 43% in 2021, according to research for Glassdoor. But the first phases of the pandemic also propelled unreasonable growth for tech hyperscalers. So you're saying a lot of these companies overhired, and then they're going to be the first to lay off, including diversity and inclusion, NHR, and other, frankly, worthless things that corporations don't need. <clears throat> that growth may have triggered hollow short wind commitments to DEI. They are now running out of breath as economic uncertainty grows. Uh, tech layoffs target HR recruitment and DEI. Research by 365 data analysis found hyperscalers scaled to a new level throughout the pandemic with Amazon's workforce growing by a whopping 99% from 19, 2019 to 2021. Coming down from the high, these companies are now forced to adjust their workforce, and 365 found the most affected roles were within HR accounting with within HR accounting for 28. Oh, accounting for 28%, not the accounting department. Those people are actually necessary. With HR accounting for 28% of the total layoffs as of January 30th, noting, for example, that talent sourcing in HR positions tend to be most affected at Microsoft and Meta. So if they're hiring less people, laying people off, you need less recruiters. Therefore, HR. Even in cases like Twitter, Elon Musk dissolved the company's employee resource group after acquiring it for $44 billion. 
ERG, Employee Resource Group Networks, have become a highly valued approach to enterprise inclusion by top performing companies like Cisco. Well, then if it was so highly valued, why did Elon get rid of it? They're not highly valued, Mr. or Miss Journalism writer here. <clears throat> they're not necessary. You will all find, all you corporations will find out, you will have your Disney moment when your politics starts costing you profits. You will find out hiring the 42-year-old loud middle-aged spinster cat lady who hates men and only knows diversity and inclusion, rah, diversity and inclusion, rah, equity, equity, rah, that's all she knows. You're going to find out that is not going to help out your company, no matter which company it is. Uh, <clears throat> where'd it go? Uh, if companies are laying off staff, they will be also be cutting back on recruitment. It's less recruitment means less need for HR staff. Forbes Bernard Marr wrote in regards to 360's research. Furthermore, despite ecosystems, ecosystem efforts to promote more female employees, women were disproportionately let go 56%. Ladies, start majoring in STEM. Start becoming accountants. <clears throat> this low interest rate environment, this is a fad. This, oh my God, women's so oppressed. We got to help them get quotas. Da, da, da. When the money starts running out, you will be on the chopping block. <clears throat> I'm trying to help the girls that listen to me. You want to be invaluable. You don't want to be an affirmative action charity hire. Uh, the Tech Layoff Report 2023 conducted by Women Impact Tech and Adiamo found that women were disproportionately affected. And while many companies were laying off 7 to 15% of the workforce, HR, talent acquisition and recruiting and DEI leaders make up between 33 and 66% of those layoffs. So that's five. Yeah, about five times. So here's the data you guys want. They are getting laid off. <clears throat> they are. I think Joker covers this rather regularly. Uh, this is the first time I've seen statistics and data. And that's fine. I'm, I'm happy you girls, you, you don't do anything. You're worthless people. It's not because you're women. It's because you're worthless. Stop fucking being cowards and hiding behind your vagina. Don't call this sexist or uh, not racist. Don't call this ists of any kind. You are talentless people. You got hired during a bubble. You have no values. You have no skills. That's why all you got is essentially either at best, you could call it white collar panhandling, and at worst, you could call it a uh, a shakedown. You better hire us, or else. And it's shocking the number of diversity and inclusion heads that end up turning around and suing their employers for what discrimination. I don't care if you corporations keep hiring these people; they I, that's fine by me. You keep losing money. <clears throat> I buy so few of your corporate product shit. I don't care. Go, yeah, go have go. Have more Dylan Mulvaney's. Go do it. Go in, go endorse having little children being trans. Go do it. I don't care. Do it. See what happens. According to Radcliffe, this exposes the industry's imbalanced access to professional wet networks and the interviewing bias that creates it. A sentiment strongly shared by two Accenture leaders pushing advancement for women in cybersecurity, as well as Franklin Reed, executive director for global DEI at Tech Systems. Well, why don't you girls start majoring in engineering? Why don't you actually bring something to the table when it comes to job interviews? Instead of, oh, I bitch and whine about white men and straight people all day. <laughs> oh, wow. He'll be a valuable asset. <clears throat> As more layoffs were announced, Ratcliffe knows companies are likely to bury DEI shortcomings with the backdrop of anticipated recession and efficiency measures. For example, Microsoft emailed to its employee claim that 10,000 jobs are no longer needed to meet the cloud hyperscale's long-term goals. Artificial intelligence and shuttered enterprise spending caused by economic uncertainty, despite it being one of the companies with layoffs predominantly in HR. I'm 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 so sick. I'm I'm going to stop reading this because I'm kind of getting angry. I am so sick and tired <clears throat> of being right by decades, by decades. I I was right that the fat, dumb, fuck, middle aged bankers needed to go do something in Minecraft. I knew the finance. I'm sick and tired of being ahead of decades that the finance industry was a bunch of washed up low IQ dude bros who had ruined the country for a decade. I'm sick and tired. I knew even, even interviewing for internships that the 24 year old HR dits 
was a charity hire, was a worthless person. And how long is it going to be a quarter century now? <clears throat> yeah, I think it is over a quarter century. It's going to be over a quarter. It might even be 30 years. 30 years. You've had talentless, inferior charity hire hacks as the gatekeepers of the labor force. The only thing that, the old, you know, your machinery and your tools and the factory and the trucks, the, the equipment in the economy, that's not really what produces GDP. It's having the most competent person managing and, and using those tools, whether it's a truck or a drill or a computer, having them produce the most, using those tools most effectively. And you worthless HR parasites have been making sure that anything but that happens. That the least qualified or your BFFs or your hate boner for men, you just give it to unqualified people. Fuck off and die. So it's just fuck your entire profession should fuck off and die and you should all be fired because you are damaging not just the companies but the whole fucking economy for all people. Fuck off, you worthless vermin. That sanctimonious attitude that somehow you're valuable, that you still have the gall to act like you're valuable. Fuck off. Oh, <clears throat> let's take a look. Have the Oscar ratings come in yet? That was yesterday. I didn't know it was yesterday. Oscar ratings. Oscar ratings. Uh, <clears throat> eight hours, 17 hours. No, I want to know what the ratings were. Don't tell me. <laughs> yeah, they haven't come out with the ratings yet. No, nothing about the Oscar ratings. Viewership decline. Okay, this one says there was a viewership decline. 96, da, da, da. Oscar viewership falling from 40 million in 2014, less than 11 million in 2021. Wait, they don't have 2022? When was this written? <clears throat> it's written today. All right. Well, that's it. Let's go to the Super Chats. I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to go to... I'm going to go to uh, Cox. Um, Ray John, two Canadian journalists are begging for jobs on Twitter. They can fuck off. Them and all these worthless people can fuck off. Work real jobs. They can all fuck off. I want you to serve me my fucking brave. Eh? Shut the fuck up and fuck off. Worthless fucking people. All right, that's it. Link below. Link to my Subscribestar account if you want to join the Subscribestar team. It's it's uh, two bucks a month. You get access to the Road Trip Podcast and some pinups of some sexy gals. Back in the day when sexy gals would send me pinups, say, yeah, you can send that. I like to help out the boys. Thanks, sweethearts. Good women. That's over. Um, there's links to my books. There's a link to my courses on Teachable, Achieving Minimalism Theory and uh, Practice. That is open for enro enrollment. Uh, the minimalism course is open. It'll be open until the end of the month. <clears throat> what else? Books, courses, subscribe. To oh, and then my Amazon affiliate link, which if you want, you can go to the big extensive link down below. You just go to olderbrother.com slash donate. You click on the Amazon banner there. Do all your Amazon purchases through there. But Cappy, I like the phone and the app. Fuck you, you anti-American trader. You should go to olderbrother.com slash donate. Click on the banner on your computer, preferably a desktop, like a good boomer would. I do my shopping online. And then I get a 4 to 5% commission to cut. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but I make a little bit of money. And then you get to help out the old capmeister slowly, slowly recover his losses from his failed Asia trip. Drew, five bucks. <clears throat> Is it safe to say... If we see something about DEI in a job posting, I should automatically assume that the company has discriminatory hiring. Yes. Uh, Drew, let's be very clear about what discrimination is. Is We prefer hire group A over all other groups. 
That's it. That's discrimination. It doesn't matter which way it goes. And DEI means that at, at the corporate level, the, the, the CEO has signed off on this. This is part of the corporate culture. Now, does it mean you shouldn't apply for the job? Not necessarily, no. Chad and I talk about this all the time. You know, you look at the big foreign accounting. Oh, my God. Like the, the price, if you go to Home Depot, you can't find chisels. You say, why can't I find chisels? Because they, the big four ordered out all the chisels because they need to get hammer and chisels to chisel off all the dried cum because they suck the DEI dick so much. The cum has dried on the faces of all the corporate executives at the big four. All that, And they got the, the chief, you got the CEO, you know, chief executive officer, the CIO, chief information, information officer, COO, chief operating officer. They have the CCO, the chief chisel operator. And it's just entire divisions created with men and women to chisel off the cum from DEI executives off of the faces of the regular big four executives. <clears throat> All right. So they're, they're up shit crick. But if you could get the big four on your resume... And you apply. I don't, I don't know if you're a minority, Drew. Yeah, absolutely played up to your advantage, but you never, ever, ever hang your hat there. Get your experience, get it on your resume, put in your two years, and get out. So if there's like a great entry level engineer job at whatever, say for example, Target, which is the most woke, piece of shit, self loathing company on the face of the planet. All right. You want to get in retail and they have a supply chain. You know, they got a supply chain position. You're interested in supply chain. Yeah, and they got an entry level. Absolutely. But you don't go for management. You're not good. That, no. You find a medium to small company or you become a consultant after you got enough years experience. You say, oh, I'll, I'll help you out, but it's $300 an hour. And the day is coming, if that's already here, where they've hired nothing but political hires. Who have no talent or skill or not as much as needed, and then they gotta outsource it. And you come in like, well, yeah, you're gonna pay me executive sale, three hundred dollars an hour. That's six hundred thousand a year. That's senior level pay. That's an executive level pay, and you don't even have to go into work. In other words, <laughs> I know this sounds weird, but the Democrats and the leftists have made it that you don't have to work with corporate America again. You can avoid corporate politics. You don't. You avoid the corporate office. You're a hired gun. You're not a corporate slave. Ladies, by the way, you go have fun dealing with that corporate politics bullshit. And if any of you could find a good chisel, even on Etsy, let me know. All right, that's it. Questions, answers, asshole consulting. Links to everything below. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.